next I'd like to talk about physically how we actually um, label the, the product. So I already talked about the range of um, labels that we have. One thing I found really useful is having a pair of tweezers handy uh, just to place the fiddly small tags. Um, when you're gluing the tags, we're actually using a pen lock um, two component um, glue adhesive. Um, you put one of these nozzles on front and then you um, glue in the, the, the tabs. Because it's, being, it's mixing the two components in this nozzle, it really makes sense to have everything laid out on your bench so that you can really go through all the elements in rapid succession. Otherwise, the glue dries, dries in the nozzle and you have to bin the nozzle and you're sunk. Um, or you just have to use a new one. Um, the tags that I used most actually were the Ziploc um, tags, which I found really useful for placement in awkward positions, uh, awkward spots and otherwise, well, why don't we just have a look. So on the helmet, I basically, is an easy one, I just put the tag inside there. On the ropes, I was using the tag on the end of the line, or I placed the tag, one of those labels, one of these, on the end of the line. Uh, I actually ended up not using the shrink wrap that DMM provide, because it's quite thin. I used a thicker shrink wrap with an adhesive in it, but it means you really have to heat that up quite hot. You have, it's about 200 degrees you need, which obviously if you're, sh if you're shrinking onto a splice or a slice, for instance, that's a slightly hot for, for the line, for a load bearing part of the line. I ha I'm less concerned uh, placing it on the end of the line where there's obviously there's no load going on here. Uh, so that to me is the correct placement for that tag. And it just makes sure that I don't lose the tags all the time. On some products uh, with companies that are working with paper trail, you actually have holes there already that you can use, so or recesses. On Petzl's rig, there's actually a dimple here just by this bolt where you can actually place one of the small, um, small tags. And on many of the new gates, there's actually uh, a spot, actually on all the new gates uh, or new products coming out of DMA, there's actually a spot where you can locate the, um, the RFID tags. Same on the Hitch Climber Eccentric, there is a recessed um, spot right here where you can place one of the tags and so on. Now, how exactly you catalogue the gear is really up to you. So, on my pulley saver, for instance, I decided not to treat this as one unit because you can take the parts, you can take it apart. So in the end, I ended up labeling the, the, the rope part with a soft eye, the, um, the OD loop, and the Pinto loop. So these are all catalogued separately. I find especially these small OD loops um, are, can be tricky to keep hold of, to keep track of because you have to replace them quite rapidly uh, every two years. Um, th that's something that I'm especially aware of that I really need to keep tabs on that. Um, I didn't bother cataloging the pulley, the Pinto as a separate unit because that's one unit, obviously, the way that's stitched in. So I just placed one tag on the, um, on the Prosic loop. You could also argue, I'm just going to look at this as one unit and just put one tag on the end of it. But I know the way I use it, certainly I'm replacing elements of it as I go along. On carabiners or connectors, as I said, some have a hole, a hole on the gate that you can use. Others don't. So on the Duralox, for instance, you don't have that option. So there I just use... Um, adhesive to place a small tag in the I-beam. So because that's, it's, it's flush, actually there's no contact um, with, you know, with the rubber or whatever that we might um, remove that. Same here, I'll place that in the I-beam and as you can see there's actually no contact between the hitch climber and the small tag on this Perfecto. 
the friction hitch uh, cords, I actually don't bother tagging, obviously, because they're just a fire and forget type product. Um, so I actually don't have tags on those because they're just not in circulation long enough. On my harness, I just placed one uh, Ziploc RFID on the back here behind the first aid kit. And then really, it's the same here. Same philosophy applies to the lanyard uh, OD loop separately. Then I have a tag on the lanyard itself and then all the, cat all the carabiners separately. What I've actually done is it's not just PPE, this helps me keep track of. On my first aid kit, just pull that out quickly, I've actually placed a label on the um, compression bandage, just allowing me to keep track of the shelf life of this compression bandage. So that'll just be flagged when that comes up for when it's due to be replaced. So that's an easy way to keep track of that one as well. Just stow that away again. Another thing I've done is that I've actually also just added on helmet stickers or uh, small tags onto the bags, just allowing me to keep track of what I've got in which bags, which bags I've got in circulation. Because one of the things you can do on the app is you can actually tag um, elements and say, you know, this belongs in the, in the ascent kit, this belongs in the you know, base anchor or whatever. So you can actually um, tag assemblies and you can actually tell which elements are where, which I find a helpful feature as well. Mm -hmm.